Okay, thank you for this introduction. You still have to wait before the nice women are up. Um, I will start. Um, I've been involved in the online collaboration economy for over 15 years. And we have really great examples there from crowdsourcing, crowd innovation, for crowdfunding. Uh, some of them even were shared here on stage. But what I noticed in all these activities, all these projects, it was not about these technology. A lot of discussions in crowdfunding, crowd innovation, crowdsourcing are about technology. But the real power is about the people, the real crowd, how to make sure that you make use of that crowd. And that's the topic I would like to discuss uh, uh, about today, about the crowdfunding, the crowd innovation, the crowdsourcing projects that are going on now. Most of them are done by traditional businesses, businesses that are organized on a normal way, and then just started to do a campaign, either a crowdsourcing campaign, a crowdfunding campaign, with an external group, an external crowd. After the campaign, they just continued with a normal business. So what if you have that crowd, that community that wants to do what you, they want to support you, they want to work together with you to realize your dreams and your idea, and take them into your business. Make sure they're really part of your business. So that's the way how you create a crowd business. So my name is Ronald Cleverlaan. I'm a strategy advisor for governments, for crowdfunding platforms. But most of all, I'm the founder of the Crowdfunding Hub. And in the Crowdfunding Hub, we connect throughout Europe crowd experts to learn from each other, create events like this on a local level, on a European level, and share experiences. Either it is from a law background, a uh, tax background, or on a crowdsourcing uh, background. And where are we now? We are in a very interesting time now. We've done very interesting experiments with crowdsourcing, with crowdfunding. But what's the future? What are the next steps you can do? So what I want to share here with you are two stories of two cases, two organizations that understand the crowd business model and implemented some elements of it already in their daily routine, in their daily business. And these are not only very small companies. One of them is raising more than 18 million euro. So even big projects, big organizations can use this. And I want to conclude with three examples of how it will change your business model or the possibilities how to change your business model. And a lot of these things sound a bit controversial, perhaps. Or for a lot of companies, a lot of business owners, they don't, are not interested in it yet. But I think this is a group of people, this is a crowd that has experience, basic experience already, with the power of crowdfunding, the power of crowdsourcing. And I think you can find out, you can understand why the next step should be crowd business. Involve that crowd much more in your organization. So to start with one project, Windpark Nijmegen. This is a wind farm being created in the east of the Netherlands. This is a wind farm. Normally, these kind of big wind farms, five big wind turbines, being uh, financed by uh, uh, big investors or energy organizations. But it was a group of people that, that thought, OK, we want to take control of it ourselves, and not only to realize these wind turbines, and not, we don't go, are going to do that to maximize any profit from it, but we want to do this to make this whole region energy neutral. So we use this project as a first step to, in the end, make a completely energy neutral region. So how to start? So this is a very practical approach. So we started two years ago already. We started by finding out like-minded people who is interested to join this effort. So we found 400 people. We created a cooperation, a cooperation where every member was able to vote. 400 people were able to vote on what kind of wind turbines need to be created, but also use that knowledge in that crowd really to do research, create a financial plan, make sure they had some contacts with the local governments to get the, the permits and get the licenses. And that's the power of that group. And at the beginning of this year, 
we take the, took the, uh, the second step. We reached out, we had the permits, we had a financial plan, so we reached out to the next level of investors. People that are living in that region also wanted to be part of this movement and also wanted to contribute with money. So we found a thousand extra one. So there is now a corporation with already 1,400 members that are interested to invest in this project. Amongst them, two to three million euro will be invested. The rest will be leveraged by a bank. But the good thing about that is that now for 100%, this corporation will own this wind farm with a valuation of 18 million euro. All the profits being made in that wind farm will be available for that corporation. So it will not go to external investors. And this corporation is, and that's the interesting thing about this crowd business model, they are not interested in uh, making the highest possible profit. They want to have a small return on their investment because they take a bit of risk. But everything else, and there is a lot of extra profit being made there, will be reinvested in that region, in new projects, in new energy projects, and perhaps even in projects that are not really profitable, but where the members themselves, amongst each other, all the investors say, okay, we think it's very important that for our region, these activities, these projects are also financed. So you will get a whole stakeholder group there connected, and you don't focus only on the money. The second case is the case of Waka Waka. Waka Waka is a project, they have a, their main goal of the company is lighten up people in developing countries. People that are living for $2 a day, how to make sure that they will get light in the evening for the kids to read uh, or to work uh, in the evenings. They created a solar light. So it's charged by solar energy, it's a LED light, it's a small battery, uh, and it can run all evening. But the interesting thing, as a startup, they needed to reach out, they needed to create a crowd. And they are very good in connecting and reaching out to crowd, and not only one time, but they decided this is, crowdfunding is the way how they are going to finance the growth of their organization. And then just one time. Do it over and over and over again. And in, a, in the last couple of years, they had, of course, they were as a startup in different stages. They started to have, they needed to have equity capital. So as a first, as a starter, they raised, uh, two, uh, they, they sold two and a half percent of their equity for 75,000 euros to get their seed round. But after that, they moved on moved on to, to reward-based crowdfunding. Because with reward-based crowdfunding, you can test your market. You cre can create a group of ambassadors. You can create, uh, uh, you, you can pre-sell already your products, of course. And they didn't also, didn't do it at once. They do, did it twice. And every time, they focus on two different platforms. They used the Dutch platform to focus on the Dutch market, and they used Kickstarter to focus on the American market. A very interesting approach to reach out to, to create a bigger network and to create a large group of ambassadors. And now they are in a further stage. They are an established business. They are a running business. So they now need extra working capital. So now they went to a lending platform and just asked for half a million of a loan. They also get it. So all these campaigns were successful. All these campaigns they created an, a new crowd. And now they are working with that whole crowd on uh, how, how to work with that crowd and how to keep them happy. And of course, that is the big question here, that if you have a lot of investors and you, ha you want to get them involved and you want to have them also have a say in your company, how are you going to manage that? So that will be the big question for crowd businesses in the future. You can have a, gr a large group of people be part of your company. How do you keep them happy? So these are the two cases. So now back to what will change in, you know, what are the possibilities you can do to change your business model? 
The first thing is your marketing team. Everybody involved in the crowdfunding industry knows if you have a group of investors through, uh, in your crowdfunding campaign, you know they are an ambassador. They, tr they, they trust you, they believe in your product, they are an ambassador, they will reach out to their own network. But normally you see that they only uh, th th that the companies in 95% are really not using that. Sometimes they send a newsletter and that's it. They don't inform their crowd anymore. What if you turn it around? You say, okay, we don't have a marketing department anymore. Our marketing department are our investors, are our ambassadors that are willing to support us. If you look at it like that, then you have suddenly you have a really big marketing department, and then you have need only need to have a kind of a marketing manager managing like a community manager managing that crowd, feeding them with information, feeding them feeding them at products. Um, I heard a story uh, just an hour ago about a company who was doing that really successfully. They are having clients and investors all over the world, and they just send out their um, uh, their products to them to showcase, to showcase to their, to their network, to their countries, to their friends, to uh, create extra exposure and also, in the end, create extra sales. Get them close to you. Get that team of, uh, create a marketing team of ambassadors and get them really in, implement them in your business uh, model. And co-creation. We're talking about co-creation for specific projects, for specific ideas. But what if you really not only ask specific questions to your outside team, but really bring them uh, also inside. Bring them uh, all your questions you have. Feed them to your investors. Feed them to your uh, feed them to your uh, crowd of uh, of ambassadors, and all your questions you have, normally when you're asking to your employees, ask it to your crowd, to your, to your community. And the last thing I want to discuss is, if you do this, and you take all these people inside your company, why not also make them a part of your company? Not only an equity share or a loan uh, in a special, uh, people, a special vehicle, but also create a new cooperative model. A cooperative model where you have around 100 people, 1,000 people, and all are connected and all can benefit, but also can vote and help you with the decisions. So these are the, the cooperative new style models. You see already much more cooperatives are being started now. And you see that they all believe in the same dream and everybody wants to be part of it. And everybody can also benefit from it. So if the, these are not only the founders and the, uh, and the starting team that isn't making any money uh, when it's a success, but the whole group of people that are investing, they are all part of it. And they all can benefit from it. So some key takeaways of this presentation. If you're focusing on crowdfunding, think about it. This is really community funding. Create that community, involve them, co-create with them, co-fund with them, but also afterwards, keep them attractive, keep them connected to you and your company, and make use of that, and not ju just as an outside group. Take them really inside your organization and co-create with them with all your questions you have. Think about, as a company, crowdfunding is not a one-time activity. Think about serial crowdfunding. Several different stages of your organization, you can diff use different types of crowdfunding. Keep on doing that. Keep on using crowdfunding, crowdsourcing, in different stages of your company. Then you will grow your group of ambassadors and they will be a much stronger ambassador. That's what I've learned from the last 15 years with online communities. The hardest thing is, is to have a core group of people pushing and helping you realizing projects. How more, the more you are involved in them, 
the more you listen to them, the more they are really a dedicated ambassador and a fan. And I want to conclude, it will create new types of business models. These are the just three examples I just gave. New marketing departments, uh, crowdsource, crowd uh, innovate with that group, and at the last, go all the way, also go into co-ownership models. This is what I want to conclude with. If anyone has any questions uh, about crowd businesses or about the crowdfunding hub, please free to ask now or ask, uh, ask me. After.